Hey. Hey. Hi. What happened after we left? Was there a hunch about Pete, right? Did he know more about the bomb planted in Julian's car? Well, if he did, he didn't get a chance to tell me. Right after you left, somebody shot him. What? Yeah, I couldn't find the shooter. The shot came from behind me, and I'm pretty sure they used a silencer, but Pete's dead. Are you okay? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. But why? What did he know that someone would kill to keep him quiet? Well, obviously someone was having Pete watched. Yeah. Somebody knows who I am, so when they saw us talking, they had to shut him up. Okay, so it's doubtful that Pete just happened to leave Julian's car unattended. Do you think he planted the bomb himself? Oh, no, I think it's more likely that Pete turned a blind eye while somebody else planted the bomb. Okay, how exactly would that work? Wait, so Sonny's middleman flipped Pete to turn on Julian? How, with a bribe or blackmail? I don't know. We can't even be sure that Pete was in contact with Sonny's broker. Okay. Okay, this is this is easy. We just got to get our hands on Pete's phone records. Oh, you want the records? Yeah. Would you settle for the phone? <gasps> How did you get that? I pulled it off of Pete before the cops got there. Hmm. Nice work. Yeah, it almost was. I mean... Do you remember Curtis Ashford? Yeah. He saw me do it. Great. Uh, you know, he promised to keep quiet if I let him see the call log and let him check some of the numbers. And I think he will. But hopefully this will tell us why that bomb was planted after Sonny called off the hit. Looks like Pete made a call around the same time Sonny called his broker to call off the hit. Okay, give me the number. I'm going to try and trace it. It's this one. Okay, what? well, yeah, it, um, it's coming up as an escort service. Really? Yeah. You know what? That could be a fun. Okay. What's the business name? Maybe it's somebody who works in Sonny's organization. Thanks. Maybe Pete was really making a date. Seriously. Maybe that's why you left Julian's car unattended. Maybe he's just embarrassed to admit it. So you think Pete was planning a party after killing his boss? You're assuming that Pete was in on double-crossing Julian, but we don't know that for sure. I mean, were there any other calls made the night Morgan died? Actually, right after Sonny called his broker, looked like somebody called Pete. Can I see it? Yeah, you can see the phone, but you can't see the number because it's blocked. No information listed. Hmm. We'll see about that. <laughs> okay, go get him. Oh, good. Find something? I might. For a second there, I thought the number came from a burner phone, which would have been pretty much impossible to trace. Yeah, well, that's why people in this line of work use them. Whoever called Pete called him right at the same time he left their car unattended. I don't think that's a coincidence. I got a name here. I, I don't recognize it, but maybe you do. It's Oscar Jessup. Oscar Jessup. You know, that name sounds familiar, but I can't place it. Well, maybe he's connected to Sonny. Maybe you know him from before, when you first started working for Sonny. Yeah, maybe, but I can't be sure, and I do not want to involve Sonny right now. Okay. Well, whoever Oscar is, he called Pete during the window when the bomb could have been planted. Are there any other calls from Jessup? Um, five. All after Morgan was killed, and I don't think they were talking about football. I, I think we're looking at this the wrong way. Okay, now, we've been assuming that Sonny's broker hired a contractor, and that contractor planted the bomb, right? Mm hmm But what if Sonny's man had absolutely nothing to do with it? What if somebody else planted the bomb? Well, I, I think it's possible. Julian had a lot of enemies, personal and professional. And what if one of those enemies 